look specifically now at the transverse and the oblique fibers to appreciate more specifically where they are and what they do. If I were to ask you what is the primary role of the transverse fibers of the dorsal apparatus, would it be a very clear answer in your mind of exactly how these fibers behave? Let's take a look. As we've already discussed, the transverse and the oblique fibers cover the majority of the proximal portion of the dorsal apparatus. They overlap one another and the transverse fibers also overlap the sagittal bands. The fibers are named simply for the direction in which they run, with the most proximal ones being transverse and the, most, the more distal ones being oblique. If we look at the cadaver, this is never as clear in the human anatomy as it is in conceptual drawings. But we can, in looking at this cadaver, if we look very carefully and we turn the specimen so the, right, the light is correct, we will be able to see different fibers going in different directions. You can see that the transverse fibers would be here you can actually see some fibers going transversely across this way. These fibers are distal to the metacarpal phalangeal joint, and that is the reason that they are metacarpal phalangeal joint flexors. The interosseous muscles insert into the transverse fibers, and the interosseous muscles are the prime MP joint flexors. Here in this image that we've also seen previously, we see the transverse fibers with the metacarpal phalangeal joint flexed, which brings them relatively distal. In this position, obviously a pull on these fibers downward like this would affect greater MP joint flexion. So one of the things that we'll review when we move forward through this series is the fact that the transverse fibers are not very mechanically efficient when the finger's in full extension. But as the finger flexes, then these fibers become increasingly mechanically effective, being most effective at the end range of MP joint flexion. The oblique fibers, again overlapping, running underneath, and adjacent as well as adjacent to the transverse fibers are a larger group of fibers and bring all of the fibers to coalesce at the central slip insertion. Here if we superimpose this outline on a cadaveric specimen we can see that the oblique fibers cover a rather large area. I would again remind you that if these oblique fibers are carrying tension, that there is no way that that tension can only extend the PIP joint. Simultaneously, that tension is moving the dorsal apparatus, the entire dorsal apparatus, proximally. Here is simply another image of transverse and oblique fibers. Again, we're looking at the proximal aspect. This would be the metacarpal area. This would be the finger with the distal aspect of the finger here. And you can see this lumbrical muscle coming forward and going into the lateral band. And we can see here an interosseous muscle that is inserting. And here is the extensor digitorum communis that's beginning to be the central slip. We can clearly see the fibers here. Another image, I'm trying to show as many images as possible to clarify exactly what we're talking about. We see the obliquity here very clearly and we see the transverse fibers here. Although it may not be immediately apparent on a cadaver, if you keep turning and looking and if you moisten the tissues, you will eventually be able to see that there are always transverse fibers and oblique fibers.